Rajesh Patia, Global CFO, joins us to discuss this. Uh, welcome to the show, Rajesh. Uh, to start off with, the first uh, gearless CI Flexo printing machine is something that you've in -house, uh, you know, uh, unveiled, and this is pretty much in-house. If you could just help us understand uh, what is this all about, and number two, what's the kind of capex that you uh, have spent on this? Uh, so this is a machine which is the first time make uh, is being made in India. And, uh, you know, this is an eight-color central impression gearless flexo printing machine, uh, which, you know, gives you, uh, till date, we've been doing the rotogravier uh, printing machines, but, you know, this is a, a technology which we have in collaboration with uh, with an Italian company, and we're the first in India to do it. So many of our customers, you know, who've been uh, importing this from, uh, you know, from from across the world, I think we this is an opportunity to serve those customers right here. And we are looking at first year about five to six machines. Uh, the, there is not much expenditure in terms of the capex to do this because you know we already have the engineering workshop fully equipped, and it's it's more of a technology transfer. Uh, you know our agreement with the Italian company also, and we say is you know ultimately the technology transfer to Uflex Engineering uh, for this. And, uh, you know, from their perspective also, it's like, you know, something which is not available in India, and they, it is going to be made, uh, made in India and, uh, you know, serve the local customers over here as well as we can look at to the export markets. But the first preference for us is the domestic people, domestic players who've been earlier importing this machine. Uh, they, I think they will have some cost advantage also because this is, depending on the features one chooses, this is going to cost anywhere between 7.5 to 12 crores. Right. So, Rajesh, uh, if you could just help us understand, when do we see the first uh, commercial product being shipped out? I think we can, uh, as I said that, you know, in FY 18, 19, we'll do about uh, five to six machines. So within this current year itself, you know, we will be, we'll be on and producing this. So around uh, 65 to 70 crores is the kind of revenues that you're looking at in FY 19 from this? Yes. Okay. And uh, what's going to be the scalability of this uh, in terms of where uh, production goes as well as in terms of sales? What percentage of your revenues do you think could come in uh, from this segment in the next three years? I think we're looking at about 20% coming from this. Okay. So you're saying 20%. Uh, so of the engineering business revenues. So, so you know, uh, engineering so business revenues for the Uflex are currently about uh, four, four, four fifty crores. So okay. we're looking to, uh, you know, add on uh, this on top of that. So around uh, approximately 90 to 100 crores in the next uh, two to three years is something that you're looking at uh, from this uh, segment. Absolutely, absolutely. 100%. Okay. And uh, secondly, if you could just help us understand, uh, currently you're saying around seven, to, uh, six to eight uh, machines is what you're looking at in FY19. Uh, but what's the scalability in terms of production? How many could you manufacture, uh, you know, in, at, at peak capacity? I think, uh, you know, the capacity constraints, uh, as I said that, you know, today we have built up the organization to deliver about this half a dozen uh, in a year. But depending on the order, you know, there is no lead time in adding up the capacity because, you know, uh, it's, it's only then, you know, we may also take a call in, uh, in you know, sort of allocating some of our existing machines to manufacturing this depending on the order book. Right. But I think on a, on a generic basis, about half a dozen machines in the first year to about nine machines in the next year. Uh, nine to ten machines in the next year is, is what is on the anvil currently. Right. Uh, apart from that, 1,200 crores is the kind of investment that you've announced in UP as well, uh, wherein... Uh, Funds would be used to enhance capacity as well as setting up of a solar power project for in-house power generation. Uh, any update on that?
So I think we uh, so we have a two prolonged strategy. One is that you know our current capacity utilization in our packaging facility is close to about 70, 75 percent. So I think there's a stage when we start to look at uh, you know our uh, uh, you know various opportunities, the locations for uh, you know enhancing that uh, capacity because by the time you will do it, you will pro probably be running at 90 percent capacity uh, from your existing uh, locations. And, uh, you know, the power, again, you know, the UP government has come up with a new solar power plant policy, and, uh, you know, they have given certain benefits in that, including the banking facilities. So a customer like us who's using today, say, about 20 megawatt in an OIDA location and about 20, 25 megawatt in other locations can really take advantage of that opportunity and bring it power costs much down. You know the solar tariff versus the... Uh, you know, the, the, the industrial tariffs in the state. So a captive uh, user would... In order to do a 1700 crore kind of a capex, uh, what is the plan in terms of fundraising? Uh, see, I'll tell you that. This we'll have to split is for the uh, for the for for the for the solar thing, and the other is for the uh, you know our capacity augmentation for our packaging uh, business. So while the packaging business is what we'll have to take it on our balance sheet, for the power thing, you know there are many other options available where you know somebody else can set up the power plant from you. So the, today there are solar uh, you know equipment manufacturers who will come and set up for you, and then you know you you pay. Them them as you uh, as you as you consume power so all those kind of a models if we get into those kind of a models I don't think so we need to raise anything on our balance sheet and that will be our first preference and uh, while packaging is the core business where we are looking at revenue the power is the business uh, you know is, a, is an extension where we're looking to have the cost savings so we can have a different solution financing solution for the two uh, investments and as you mentioned on the back of the solar power project, uh, your power and fuel cost will come down. Uh, in the third quarter, that stood at almost 4.9% of your consolidated revenues. Uh, is it right to say that it will probably come down to around 2 to 2.5% of your revenues absolutely, there? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, and yes. and from which, by which quarter can we expect this to happen? I think the power thing will take... Uh, not less than I think 12 to 15 months uh, from the time we order and uh, we today talking to you know many companies in the uh, who have expertise on the solar power side to see as to you know how we can go about this project yeah but any timeline that you could give us that will it happen in I think FY19 it itself by, by middle of 19 or towards end of 19 only okay uh, beyond that as well what's the kind of capacity utilization in terms of the sanan plant right now so Sanam is has recently been commissioned. So you know the December quarter was the first quarter where you know it had uh, the full effect of the uh, you know commissioning as it was commissioned on uh, you know at the end of uh, September. And you know today we are at a various uh, you know stages of the product approval because after you commission the plant, that's the time you go to your various customers give them the product life cycle trials and then you know it takes a bit of a time so i think fy it will be i think for me it will be to say that you know fy19 is the time when you know we look at about 2 billion packs uh, exit run rate on uh, for for this uh, facility uh, currently we have a capacity of 3.5 billion packs and which can be augmented with an additional capex of about 45 crores, just adding up another printing line while all the other infrastructure is already in place. So this is what we'll do it probably a couple of years down the line when we have more visibility upon, you know, as to how the existing capacity is used. 
and uh, you know we can we can simply add this uh, over a couple of months and you know go ahead and expand double the capacity but uh, fy19 is the uh, fy20 is the time when you know we'll take that decision depending upon what's the kind of capacity utilization you have if we are at a run rate of about 3 to 3.5 billion at that point in time probably that uh, you know decision will be taken at that time to you know just add another printing line to expand the double the capacity right and very lastly rajesh uh, if you talk from a q3 perspective we did see some bit of pressure on terms of margins on the back of higher input cost uh, volume growth was healthy for the packaging segment as well as for the polymeric film segment uh, what's the expectation how are you expected to end the fourth quarter as well as fy as a whole so i think the volume growth is still there yes there there were some cost pressures and uh, you know q3 also had one exceptional uh, product related cost of about 20 crores which you know uh, lowered the EBITDA and the overall profitability of the company and uh, uh, this apart uh, you know the Q3 was also impacted by, as I said, that you know we had commissioned the Sanand plant, uh, which is which is which is which is a, which is a new newborn baby, uh, you can say, and you know it will take some time to contribute. And in the meanwhile, whatever are the operating costs over there, so you know the existing businesses will have to absorb that. So it had a bit of impact on that. But if you leave these two factors aside, I think the margins were pretty much the same, and uh, the volume growth, uh, you know, really helped to maintain, uh, you know, even after absorbing these two special things, you know, to st remain very, very healthy. Right. All right, Rajesh. Pleasure speaking to you and thank you for sharing your views as well. So that's in terms of uh, the new segment that they have added. The stock as well uh, seeing gains of almost uh, 3% as we speak to the management. Almost trying to inch towards the day's high. 375 is the level. Currently, the stock is trading at levels of 371. But let's quickly slip into a short break and then we will bring you a conversation with Bhavin Shah of Samiksha Capital to get his top investment ideas. Please stay tuned.